Well, I tell you what, remember it was only about an hour and a half ago, but we're just dancing? Yeah. They're yeah. just dancing out in the parking lot, yeah, having a good it. old time. No putting, doubt. Putting some drinks in. And uh, there, there's no two ways about it. You want to talk about the definition of a buzzkill, this is it. It doesn't take away from the fact that the Niners opener is here. Uh, the excitement for the season remains. The hope is still strong. But there is a big old bucket of water that just got dumped on a 49er fan um, in that Christian McCaffrey is out for this game. And uh, we were just talking about this. Um, look, 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 and I were having this conversation, and he brought up an interesting question, which is, wasn't it said throughout camp by Christian and the Niners that if there was a game, if there was a game that counted, he was already ready to play? And now here's a game that counts, and it's weeks later, and he's not ready to play. So my question number one post-game for Kyle Shanahan, and I'm sure it'll be asked, is what happened? Did something new happen to Christian McCaffrey? Is it a re-aggravation of something from earlier? What happened that changed that answer to no, we're not ready for a game that counts? Yeah, could be just precautionary, but it seemed like all of the chatter heading up to tonight was that, yeah, if there's a game that matters, I'll be able to play. And it, it felt like it was not a huge deal. It was just a little bit of a calf thing. And he was going through all of what he was doing on the side and he was running. And it seemed like he was trending toward being able to play. So I'm also a little surprised, even shocked that, McCaffrey's not going to go tonight, that he's been listed as inactive. And I wonder when he would have had any possible setback because they haven't really gone through much in the way of rigorous practice, and he certainly hasn't been out there. So maybe it's just where he's close to being able to play, but the doctors have an eye toward the long game, and so they're going to hold him out as a precaution. Well, I mean, he did practice this week, even though at times it was of a limited nature, and you know this as a radio doctor. Yep. You know that when it comes to muscular injuries like that, it's not like it takes some sort of contact or something weird to happen to re-aggravate these things. He could have just been running, and 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 it you know it starts barking at you a little bit. Who knows? Um, and yes, it's week one, and you see the word Achilles. I would imagine that the 49ers, if there's any question at all, the right thing to do is to keep him out. Right. Right. Although with, you know, these types of injuries, as we've seen, and I don't know the nature of the calf strain, if it is a strained Achilles, if it's the calf as it connects to the Achilles, we don't really know fully what the injury is. But we saw with Kevin Durant, that thing was largely a ticking time bomb. And there was no real amount of rest and caution that you could pay for that to get better. And I hope that this isn't that because then you're looking at a, the the specter or the scepter yeah. rather of something that really bad is going to happen but for now hopefully it's just precautionary and he's able to come back on sunday in six days and be able That's to right. go in minnesota yeah absolutely we should mention the name patrick taylor jr as well as matt mayoko nbc sports bay area has named actually taylor potentially ahead of garendo as the backups yeah. in this game now maybe that was just the way he wrote it but he wrote patrick taylor Junior's name first and Isaac Garendo second as backups to Jordan Mason tonight in the backfield for the 49ers. All right, we're drawn close. We're inside of an hour to the game. There's no Christian McCaffrey. However, uh, uh, the show must go on. So 888-957-9570 is the number. Let's go to Bob in the city here on Willard and Dibbs live at Levi's. What's up, Bob? What are you doing? Driving, I'm getting ready to watch this game. It's going to be great. Yeah, uh, let's go, Bob. Yeah, no, yeah, no big, no big deal. Just shoot it over some Novocaine. Didn't you see North Dallas Forty? <laughs> totally. I'm just playing. Yeah. No, but anyway, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think this is a good omen because now we get to see uh, Jordan Mason, and I love the way he runs. He runs with authority, and I just, I'm, I'm just waiting to see if this is going to be a really good breakout game for him. Well, Bob, I'm, I, I mean, it's very silver lining thinking, 
But by the same token, there are a couple things to say in there. Not that you're rooting for these or want these, but it's reality now. Kristen's not playing tonight. Okay, so what are some of the good things that come from that? 49er fans have been asking to see a lot more of Jordan Mason for a couple years now. Well, you're forced into it. It's not ideal, but here we go. So, like, I'm always big on when you get an opportunity, what do you do with it? And it's a big one for Mason tonight. Oh, it's a huge ask. And I'm just looking at Adam Schefter on Twitter, and he points out that Jordan Mason making his first career start, he has never had more than 69 rushing yards, 11 carries, or 27 snaps in a game. In a game. So I would imagine the 27 snaps is going to be broken. Hopefully the 69 rushing yards is a record, a personal record that gets broken as well. But you're asking for a lot from Jordan Mason, who's been, you know, the change of pace guy, the rest guy. Mop-up yeah, guy. The mop-up guy. And now you're asking him to come in and be RB1. That's a big one on a Monday night football game. All right, so like I mean, game plan it a little bit. Like if you if you were the 49ers and you're looking at what's reality now, how are you changing your approach to trying to get first downs? I'm gonna change it in that I'm gonna look to use Debo a little bit more in the run game, jet sweeps, and I'm also gonna line up Debo in the backfield a little bit and get him involved. And you know, Jordan Mason, you're gonna have to be the guy. Now you're not gonna lean on him like you lean on Christian McCaffrey, but you're gonna have Jordan Mason tote the rock and he's going to be the primary ball carrier and other than that i do think you're going to see a little bit more of the short quick passing game screens and you know let's see how we get the ball to debo immediately and let him be a glorified running back on the edge i don't disagree with anything you just said but where my mind goes it doesn't immediately even go to jordan mason or debo samuel it goes to brock purdy uh, because he is still he's running the show and uh, if you don't have that weapon, it's his job to get the ball to the other weapons. And I think as a Jets defensive coordinator, which is essentially what Robert Sala is, where does your mind go? If you're thinking there's no McCaffrey, then Debo is exactly where every brain is going to go. And so my concern is, is that a very speedy Jets defense is going to be ready for that. They're going to be ready for jet sweeps. And one of the beauties of using a wide receiver the way they use Debo is the element of motion and surprise. Right. And I don't think you're going to have as much surprise tonight with the idea of Debo. Could you just line him up in the backfield and do some things? Yes, of course you can. You're, if you block him well, you're going to get first downs. But I really think that in year three, with a full training camp and, and, and extra pounds of muscle and all that stuff, Right, if you're gonna give the guy sixty million dollars, hey, let's go. Yeah, ball is yours, dude. Complete some passes. Let's go. You can get. You got your full complement of receivers. Um, kind I, of. I, I know yeah. there's no Pearsall, and I know that Ayuk might miss some plays, but yeah. you've got a group out there along with George Kittle that I think, as you're saying. Get the ball out of his hands, but also put it in his hands. Like, he has to be able to get first downs yeah. without his full complement of weaponry. And this is what so many people have been waiting for, clamoring for. Oh, what's Brock going to be like when he's not surrounded by all these all-stars? Well, here you go. This is the first crack at it because Brandon Ayuk is not going to play a full game. And Christian McCaffrey has been ruled inactive due to the calf slash Achilles injury. So... You're going to have Kittle, and you're going to have Debo, and that's about it for your skill weapon guys. I do want to point out something that you mentioned in the depth chart. Patrick Taylor, Patrick Taylor Jr. Yes. In his fourth year. Yes. Spent three years in Green Bay. He's had 65 career carries. Okay, how'd they go? At 261 yards. So he's averaging about uh, about four yards a tote. Out of babe, that's so, the number. That's what you want. Hey, guy, he scored a touchdown. He scored a touchdown. Yeah, you get four, four yards a carry. That's a first down. So he probably will be the backup ahead of Isaac Garendo, we'll who's almost. He hasn't played much at all. No, I mean he's a rookie who also missed a good portion of camp. Yep. And so you're probably right. I I I, I hearken back to something Hutch said to us short time ago, which really now comes into play with Christian McCaffrey being out. And that is that in a game like this, it's week one, and you're going up against, uh, I don't want to say a veteran-laden team because they've got some youth in spots, but because Aaron Rodgers is at the helm, it feels like there's experience on the other side. You've got to go with one word, and that's trust. And those rookies, Garendo being one of them, you, like, you don't know if you can trust them yet. 
I like I can't tell you how many conversations I've had um, and, and just people I've listened to, whether it be on the radio, TV, direct conversations, people who have played the game talk about the difference in a regular season football game versus anything that these rookies have ever experienced before. So it's great that we've all decided, for example, that Dominic Pooney is just, well, he's just great. He's a wonderful exactly. draft pick, and he's phenomenal, and Baldy loves him on film, and so it's done. Pooney's great. Dude, there are people who shrink when the lights come on. And there's the opposite. There's the little camp guy who you're like, I'm not sure, and then the lights come on bang and they've got something and this is a totally different speed that they're about to see tonight versus anything they've ever experienced before high school college or camp and so we'll see and, and you don't know who you can trust yet when it comes to all of those rookies who've never done it before. Right, which is why I do think that Jordan Mason will be leaned on because he's a guy who's been through it now. He's He's been here with the 49ers for a couple of years, and he's been the guy to tote the rock. Cam Inman points out that this will be Brock Purdy's first career start without, without Christian, Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Exactly so right. So it's going to be, you know, as we look at the DAC contract and we look at everything else that we're talking about for the future, Welcome to the NFL, Brock. This is a big night for him now. How does that fact hit you? Because can I just share real quick, like, look, if you sat here and, and, and you were in control of the universe and you said, I'll offer you right now, you can have Christian back in this game. I'd be like, yes, done. But when you tell me, hey, this is, first Bro this is Brock's first game without Christian, there's a piece of me that's like, all right, let's see it. Let's see it. Yeah. Let's see it. Like, that's you. interesting yeah. to me. Yeah. I get that. And the stakes are high, but not, really. not crazy no, high. No. It's week one. Right. It's week one. If they lose tonight, then uh, they go to Minnesota 0-1. Right. Right. And 16-1 right. and one is still on the table. The division is still on the table. It if is. you lose tonight, you're a game behind the uh, Seattle the Seahawks. Seahawks. Yeah. And, the Seahawks. and you face them in a couple of few yeah. weeks. And, yeah. I mean, and the Rams are in a little bit of turmoil in Arizona. Yeah. Arizona but Think about it. The Rams are 0-1, and, and they've lost Puka Nakua sure. for, for like a significant period of time. Right. So the big focus for me is on the McCaffrey injury and then beyond that i'm kind of with you like let's see it brock okay yep. you don't have christian mccaffrey and everybody's been waiting for well when you don't have mccaffrey and and you don't have debo and kittle and iuk then we'll see if you're any good <laughs> well now we get a chance to see him without a guy who finished fourth in the mvp and we get a chance to see it well look if we go back to last year Brock's oh, first, third, I'm sorry, third. Yeah, but, but if we go back to games where Brock Purdy had to play without significant pieces around him, yeah. everyone goes to the three-game losing streak, and the fact that he played three games without Debo Samuel and Trent Williams, and there was no doubt that it looked like a lesser version of Brock Purdy. I will try to remind people it did not look like a quarterback who suddenly could not function. You, you were up against a good defense in Cleveland in a weather game, and you were given a deficit, and what would you do? You moved your team down the field. You got in a field goal range. The, the history would look on this very differently if Jake Moody makes that kick, and it's the kick he should make. Was it a perfect game? No. Was it a game that he could have, should have won? Absolutely. You go to Minnesota. I know how that ended, but the defense could not, over the next two weeks, in fact, against Kirk Cousins and Joe Burrow, could not force one incompletion. Right. Literally could not force an incompletion. <laughs> and Brock Purdy, if you may remember, there was that whole controversy about whether or not he was actually concussed coming out of the Vikings game. I can't believe he wasn't. He wasn't supposed to play in the Bengals game. Right. And then he did. But I just go back and I look at that, and was it a lesser version of Brock? Yes. What is a version that, that couldn't win a football game? No. No. And so there's a piece of me that does have a little uh, interest in, in seeing something like this. How does this 49er offense function now uh, with, with another very, very big piece out of the fold? And especially when we look back at week one and we look at all of the shaky quarterback play and the fact that offenses look like they're a little bit behind defenses and now Brock Purdy's going to come out and not have a full Iuke and Trent is fresh off the couch and now you don't have CMC. For me, 
He said something earlier about 25 points. It might actually be 21 points. Maybe. This game might be first to 20 because I think the Jets are going to struggle a little bit with Aaron Rodgers and his rust. And I do think the Niner defense is better than what people are giving it credit for. I do too. And then on the other side now with no McCaffrey and Ayuk and Trent still kind of uh, emerging from their offseason mothballs. I see this one as maybe a Wishnowski special. I mean, look, look at last night, for example. You get to 20 points. What do you get? You get overtime. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if you're going to win, but but yeah, I I would have a hard time believing that the New York Jets, unless they get maybe a defensive score or something like that, I got a hard time believing that they're going to get to 24 or north of it. And quite frankly, if they do, then then I'd be real concerned. Right. Then I would be very concerned. Not about. Christian McCaffrey related things, but about defense related things. If you've got Monday night football in your building and, and full health and a 40 year old quarterback coming off of Achilles and they go bust 27 on you, we got a problem. Yeah, no doubt. Houston or as a guru would say, NASA, we have a problem. And that, you know, with the coordinator change and you've got new pieces out there and you've got Yadam who's going to start in the secondary. And so, yeah, a lot of pressure on this defense with the new coordinator to come out. And especially now that there's no McCaffrey, you got to pick up your offense maybe tonight because your offense is not going to be firing on all cylinders potentially with Trent getting his first football action since the Super Bowl. Brandon Ayuk, the same thing, and no CMC. Bit of a tall order, but this is where you look at Kyle Shanahan and you lean on that laminated play sheet because I'm sure he wasn't completely caught off guard by the McCaffrey inactive. I'm sure that he had a contingency plan in place in case McCaffrey wasn't going to be able to I mean, to go. he said early on in camp with all the holdouts that that's his job is to have every contingency plan yep. in place. That said, we also point to Friday. Friday, when Christian McCaffrey's injury designation came out and he was directly asked, is this a concern? And he said, quote, it's not a concern for me. Which, you know, clearly made everybody believe, okay, yeah. then, we're, then we're playing football on, on Monday night. Well, I mean, and, what and, I heard him say is, uh, well, you know, my contract just got reworked and I got a bunch of guaranteed money, so I'm good. Uh, that's not what <laughs> Maybe that, a little that, cynical, that is, but, that's, you know. Well, and that's not Christian at all. I know. I mean, that's, I know, not, but it, yeah. that's not who he is. So from Friday, he's not concerned at all to Monday where he can't play. Well, again, now you have to start going through and, and unpacking words and like, you know, yep. what does that mean by you're not concerned? Are you not concerned about a long-term injury or are you just flat out not concerned because you can definitely play? Or did something happen between Friday and today, which is also on the table in terms of how this all played out? I want to thank my, my, my buddy Jay, who just texted in, which is a good point um, and, and, and something maybe we should talk about next two games, which both happen over the next 13 days. We'll both be on artificial surfaces. Yeah, not good. Not okay. good, Bob. Okie doke. Like we, like you yeah. say, that's not, not good, Bob. good, Bob. Not good, Bob. It's not good. Yeah. Well, the one thing about an Achilles on the hard surface is, even if your Achilles are good, that's going to strain your Achilles no matter what. Like, well, you know, I think about days when I'm out of, even on the concrete, as opposed to like if I go running on the yep. concrete or running on the trail, you could feel it. And these guys are highly tuned and highly trained athletes, and he's got an Achilles issue and a calf strain. And now you're going to put him on the carpet? Well, it's not look, good. look, I'm, I'm going to say what the bigger reaction to this news is. The bigger reaction is not, oh, bleep, he's not playing tonight. The bigger reaction is, oh, bleep, this might be a problem all year long. There are very few, and you know this, especially in the NFL, there are very few injuries that give you a warning shot. But this is one of them. And, and often, if a calf is is bothering you or your Achilles is bothering you, uh, uh, every doctor will tell you that yes, sometimes that does mean there is a weakening in the area and you are more vulnerable, you are more susceptible. And we've all watched it. We've all watched this happen from Kevin Durant to the other examples that we've brought up where one thing led to another. And, and my hope is, is that that's what the 49ers are doing right now and being very cautious. But the, 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 the scary part is, 
is maybe you do sit him week one, two, and three and, and, and find a way to be two and one when the Patriots get here in three weeks. And you're like, okay, well, now we're going to play him because he feels at full strength. Well, does he in the second quarter or does that thing just bark again right when he gets yeah. out there or worse or worse? Or worse, yep. Instead of the bark, it's the bite. Yeah. And that's the thing about a calf slash Achilles that you just can't you can't do anything about it. It's not like you can I guess you could have Achilles surgery, but then your year's over. So if you wanna if it's a partial or if it's you know strain and you wanna go in there and shore it up and do surgery, well now you're gone for the year because the Achilles surgery is not one you come back from quickly. So the other thing is you try to baby it. You pick your spots. Yep. You hope it quiets down. Oh. And then you play him. And, you know, like you said, it, it could come back to haunt you. But right now, week one, you take caution. And that's the smart thing to do. And you hope that, all right, maybe next week, Minnesota on Sunday, you're 1 0. You go to Minnesota on the turf, and maybe he still is where he is now 80%, 75 You sit him again. You slow play it as long as you can. Maybe I'm a weirdo here, but yeah. there, there really maybe. is. Maybe. Maybe. There's something about stuff like this that is kind of at a fundamental level what makes the NFL so unpredictable and so exciting. Yeah. I think about Brock Purdy from this standpoint. This is who he was. He was somebody who walked onto the field the same way Jordan Mason will tonight while people were going, well, that's the end of that season. What the hell are we going to do now? And now, out of the next 21 games, he won 17 of them. And the 49ers have gone to two NFC title games, and they've gone to a Super Bowl. You don't know what you're going to find. You know, there are a lot of players in the NFL. Hell, go over to the NBA. Isn't it who Draymond Green was once upon a time? There are a lot of people you find because somebody you know got hurt. Now, I'm not telling you Jordan Mason's about to be a star or anything like that, but... I, I think he's a pretty good football player. I think he's pretty interesting, and, and, and who knows if it's Jordan or anything else for that matter. Hell, maybe it's Isaac Garendo by the time we get to week six. Yeah, it could be. Or maybe Christian McCaffrey is back on, on Sunday, and, and everything is fine. All of these are maybes, but I, I just try to keep that optimistic mind of you don't know what you're going to find around the corner, and no team, no team is that good if they can be taken down by the loss of one player, unless that one player is, is, your quarterback. is the quarterback. Yeah, and I get that. And ultimately, you know, the NFL season's about attrition. It's a battle of attrition anyway. And last year they had a, a great run. They didn't have that injury. They didn't have an injury to any of their really, really critical players. I know Trent Williams missed a couple and Debo missed a couple. Fine, but they didn't have long stretches without their big player. And this is it. This is their bell cow. This is a guy who was... Top five in the MVP voting, and he's going to miss week one, and you hope that's it, but it's all about adjustments. And Kyle Shanahan now, it's next man up, and you figure out with that beautiful laminated play sheet, how are you going to scheme it? Well, let's find out, man. I'm also like my media brain works where it's like when there are narratives out there, but they're hypothetical. I love when we get to a point where it's like, well, now we get to find out. It's real. Oh, what if the Niners ever had to play without McCaffrey? You know yep. what it would look. No, you don't. No. You don't know. But now we're going to find out. Yep. So tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon with the roast and Steiny and Goo and you and I will be all over this. And we're going to have at least one page, one chapter in the book of what would the Niners look like without Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, it's either Mason looks good or Taylor or Garendo, or maybe they fully abandon the run. Do they go more to Debo Samuel? I think that they will use Debo in the backfield a good amount, but ultimately now Kyle Shanahan and that beautiful laminated play sheet, you got to <laughs> figure out how you're going to scheme it with a limited Ayuk, Trent off the couch, and no McCaffrey. I wonder when he knew. I wonder when the playbook started getting the the, the non Christian playbook started coming together. I would imagine this morning. Uh, Oof. I'm sure he knew before the word came out. I'm sure he had a good idea about where McCaffrey was. Yep. I mean, we all kind of assumed he was going to play. Yep. Maybe it's our fantasy football week one brains. Apologies to Sam Lubman who has McCaffrey. Oh, and 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 thousands upon thousands of others who are listening you to think? us right now who are devastated um, for themselves. Sure.